everyone. Oh. Hey everyone, this is Addie again. Our live feed got cut off and we just have a few more things to add to part one of our live stream. So um, hang tight with us here. And uh, we're still discussing post-election voter experiences, poll worker uh, issues. Um, I'm Addie Olvera. I'm here with Kathy Green, Mario Morataya, and Jim Soper. Hi. Uh, what I was saying towards the end there when things happened, um, I liken elections to running an airline. For a county to run an election is similar to running an airline. It's really complicated. And I said, uh, I mean, you have to worry about getting the luggage, the tickets, your airline personnel, the peanuts, everything's got to be in place. And what we've heard here is that it's complicated. And people should understand that, well, there's about 35,000 commercial flights every day using train staff. They practice this every day. They do it every day. And the problem with elections is, well, California has, I believe the number is 24,000 precincts in California alone. It's over 100,000 in the country. It's a huge number. And they have to get all of this organized. It has to work on election day. You can't postpone it. It's got to work on election day. You're using temporary staff because you can't keep a staff of thousands hired throughout the year. So it's temporary. They have to go through training. They're using equipment that is now getting old. It could break down or there will be other problems. We need to replace the equipment. We need to replace it with open source. Um, it's a tough job and people should be thanking their registrars for the hard work and all of the election officials for the hard work they do. They are generally running with a strapped budget. They're not getting enough money to do this. And so when they go to ask the county or everybody should be asking the state for more funding, for better funding, this is our government that's at stake. And we need to do this better. And so we need to uh, improve the the situation, improve the systems, get open source systems in there, and and just make everything better. But first of all, for most of the registrars, thank them for the enormous work they're doing under trying times. I would not want the job. I couldn't do it. I'd make a mess of it. I will then mention uh, the Voting Rights Task Force spends a lot of time in Sacramento uh, trying to get the laws changed improved. We've had some successes, and you'll hear more about that later on, but you can look up Voting Rights Task Force on my website, countydiscast.org. I think we will have a Facebook page going in a week. But there's something else people should be aware of, which is that there, there was AB 1970, which requires the Secretary of State to write new regulations for processing provisional and vote by mail ballots. Now that will be another live stream, stream about processing all of this. But I wanted to ask our expert panel here what their takeaway is, what mostly focusing on the election day, what would they do to make it better? Um, well, for me, uh, as I said, for, for me personally, I felt like I didn't have that many uh, problems. Um, other people probably had some, some issues to deal with. Uh, at our precinct, and, and there was only one precinct at our location, so we maybe got pretty lucky with that. Um, but from what I gathered, uh, I think that we could do more with uh, in terms of efficiency of poll worker training. Uh, for me, I, I got everything. I got, I, I, maybe because I paid attention, I, I, you know, I read the book and I got everything. But one of the problems that I had at my precinct was that uh, we had uh, a couple uh, who was working that didn't speak very good English. And so when people came to, to ask them to find their name on the roster, uh, they were asking people for their IDs. Uh, and so, and I know that that's against the law to ask somebody for their ID or to deny them if they don't have their ID. Uh, I understand that they were using it just to 
uh, streamline the process of finding their name faster because we did get pretty crowded uh, at multiple portions of the day. We had people in line uh, out the door. Uh, we had people voting uh, not in the privacy uh, sections. They were just sitting next to each other like I am here with their ballots out, filling it out. Um, so uh, part of that is the location was too small. Uh, so, and I've already talked about that. Uh, so that's an issue, uh, poll worker training, uh, as well as the overall issue of, of just making people know how to vote, I think is a main, is one of the things that I found pretty surprising, uh, being patient with people who don't know how to vote. Uh, I had people, we had 21 spoiled ballots out of about 200 or so casted total. Um, so what that meant is that a lot of people screwed up. They voted for multiple presidents. They voted for multiple, they voted both yes and no on propositions. And I didn't really understand what that, what that was all about. Um, but it's quite simple, really, if you just read the directions, uh, how to vote. But maybe, I don't know, for one reason or another, people made a lot of mistakes. And it's just one of those things where you just have to be patient and explain to people how to vote, you know, but, uh, yeah, issues uh, that uh, I think are overlooked. Just general population uh, training on how to vote effectively. Uh, I don't know how you would go about that just because there's so many people, but you know that's just another little point that I wanted to make. I'll, I'll take that for a second. I think what you're saying there is we have to simplify the election process yes. in part. Uh, Ridiculously we, long ballot. San Francisco had 66-0 votes on their ballot. And some places vote for three, vote for four. Uh, I already instantly run out ballot, rank order the people in a certain way. And it's clear that some people, um, it's too much for them. I mean, heck, I, I spent an hour going through my ballot and then talked with my brother, helping him through his ballot. We voted by mail. Uh, it's too complicated and we need to simplify that. Um, it's gotten, especially since 2000, I was shocked to see the San Francisco handbook about six years ago. It was thick. I said, what's going on here? This is complicating the job for the election officials and for the voters and we need to simplify it. Kathy, do you have some observations here? Well, I agree with Mario that I think I said it before. People, uh, it's shocking how much, how little we know about our own elections. I didn't know that much. I mean, about I voted, and I read the materials I get from the registrar. Um, it would be great if we could rotate poll worker duties, so everyone would get a chance to try it. But I, I think it went well, and I do appreciate what Jim said about how complex a task it is to arrange this. It's a miracle it worked as well as it did. We didn't really have any really major problems that I know of. Um, and a remarkable thing was how happy everyone was. People were just beaming all day. I think they felt very proud and happy that they get to vote. Because I noticed it, they just, almost no one was really looking unhappy. Even the people that had some problems they got paid attention to and it got worked out and they'd be beaming again so americans like to vote but it sure would be great if we could make it easier do you want to how do we improve elections election day um i really believe that training is uh important we need more than an hour and a half of training we need to make sure that every inspector and the county is giving people the same information and that the processes are the same in every county uh, throughout the state. Yeah. And be nice if voting procedures and voting uh, uh, during voting procedures for primaries and voting procedures for general elections were similar across the nation. Even if they have to change from uh, primaries to general, but that they were very, they were similar then we could compare and make improvements across the board versus trying to figure out which county is doing it better or which state is doing it better and um, 
that makes it too, that makes it very hard to organize um, and and make a better voting process um, in our nation. So um, I say that we need to to rally against if you are upset about the elections. You should be upset not just about um, you know uh, who won or who lost, whether local or at a national level. But be upset about the voting or the voter who didn't get to vote because maybe he was on the roster and upset left or got a provisional and their signature is not going to match um, for whatever reason maybe they're signing different that month and um, and their votes not going to be counted um, so I know that in the primaries there was uh, many many provisionals and a small portion of them weren't counted but if you're running for city council and that small amount of uh, votes really would have made a difference for you then um, you should be concerned about election integrity and concerned about voter suppression so please uh, my say is get involved um, Jim has the voter rights task force which um, they have regular meetings and they talk about bills um, that are happening throughout the state and that may be on to be voted on to make things better. He mentioned uh, AB 540 earlier. 450. Uh, SB 450 and AB S 1970. Oh, right. SB 450. My apologies. And the other one. Those uh, uh, things that are happening in your in your state, you need to see if you know. Here in California, we have Jim Sober who's paying attention to this, and he guides us. But you know, we're only a small group. Everyone across the state should be paying attention to this. And if you're in uh, another state, Ohio, Wyoming, you need to be uh, looking at the bills that your legislature is putting through um, to either improve or make elections worse. Um, and you need to be to fight, fight for that um, and organize um, in your state. So that's my feedback in terms of how to make improvements. Um, in terms of just procedural, um, I'm very excited about this eligibility review station. I think one of the things that kind of just worried me a lot was um, other than that our inspector was really efficient and he was well spoken, he treated everybody nice, he even had a few voters walking away with a smile who came in, upset they weren't on the roster, made them feel good that their vote was going to count. Um, he, he was telling them that their vote was going to count uh, that night. And I know that that's not accurate. Provisionals do not get rushed to the ROV and get counted that night. Um, it take it can be days. It could be a whole 30 days because they have to verify the signature, unseal them, uh, check if the precinct was the correct precinct that they voted in, sort out which cards get counted. Maybe the third card doesn't get counted, but the first card does because they voted in the wrong precinct. Ballots have to be remade, and then they get counted. And if your signature didn't match from the get-go, oh, none of your cards are going to get counted. So um, that does not happen same night. So if you were in my precinct and uh, the inspector told you, don't worry, your ballot's going to be counted tonight, uh, that was misinformation. Um, the other thing he was telling folks is the back of your provisionals tells you um, um, in 35 days you can go and look up if your um, ballot was counted. Um, it won't tell you if all three cards, or depending on how many cards you had in your uh, local race, uh, were counted, but it will tell you that it was counted and you can at least count that one of those cards was counted. Um, and you can go online and it gives you a website or phone number to call and there's a receipt number attached to your provisional envelope and that's the number that you put in. And he was telling them, um, your, uh, this is inf your receipt has information for you, so you can go check to see if you double voted or not. If you voted three thousand times, so, you know that your receipt is going to help you check if you you voted three thousand times. He was trying to be funny and trying to just make people laugh, but it was also misinformation. It's it's not so that you can check if you double voted. Um, it's so that you can check if your vote counted. Period. And so um, I went on every receipt and highlighted that line that tells you where you can call, get information. So 
at least if someone was walking away with a receipt and I couldn't correct each time he said that to someone, um, they would probably read it because it was highlighted. Um, so that's one of the things that I did to correct, uh, to correct that. So I really think that inspectors just need to, a more cohesive training and what not to do, you know, cause you know, even, even though he was trying to be humorous, it was misinformation and someone could actually take him pretty seriously. Um, and you know, be shocked. What do you mean I voted twice or why would I, would they be concerned that I would vote twice? That's, you know, that could be pretty intimidating to be told that at least if it were me. Um, I had another experience I actually remembered. Um, we probably could use more training about um, how to deal with um, very angry voters. I had a, a woman at my poll site who needed um, assistance voting. Um, I had noticed that she didn't know how to read. Um, she knew how to spell her own name and her address, but she didn't know how to... Um, after that, I saw she was challenged. She had challenged writing her driver's license number on the provisional envelope. I said, she's not going to be able to read her ballot. And so I asked her if she wanted to um, have a family member help her with her ballot. And she said, no, can you help me? And we we're allowed to. If we're going to circle the, bu the bubbles for them, the actual choice, when I have to actually sign something that I help her vote. But if I just reading the card to her, I don't have to sign anything, and I sit. So I sat with her and I read each section in Spanish to her. And there was a voter right next to us who could not see our card because there's these walls, small walls. But he got really upset because I was reading to her on uh, Spanish. He could not tell what I was saying to her. And he got really angry and yelled at us while I was helping uh, this woman vote. And um, she was elderly, um, monolingual Spanish speaker. So. I, you know, I got defensive in the moment and I said, sir, I, I didn't, I wasn't rude. I just said, sir, I'm just reading the card for her. Uh, and you know, she needs assistance. And he's like, well, I don't know what you're telling her. You could be telling her what to vote. I said, sir, I'm a poll worker. I know what I need to do. If you have a complaint, please go to the inspector and the phone number will give you a number where you could also call the ROV to complain. So, um, but, you know, I probably could have used more training on how to handle that. They did tell us in our training that if um, Trump voters showed up um, to intimidate people in the front to call 911, they did tell us that as part of our training. And I kind of thought that was inappropriate because as poll watchers, you can be from any party or any candidate and be within 100 feet, uh, do whatever you want within 100 feet of a poll site. Could be dancing if you want <laughs> you know um, but um, you know I guess they were highly concerned that um, Trump had been saying something about to voters that he was uh, the, the election was gonna be fraudulent and he was possibly gonna lose because of fraud election fraud so he um, was re you know essentially asking his voters to go to poll sites and be poll watchers and he has a right to do that um, there Hillary's uh, probably had a lot of poll watchers supported also, but the way that they presented it during the training, they only mentioned Trump voters, and, and that kind of bothered me, um, even though, you know, I personally did not support uh, Donald Trump. So this is um, the kind of uh, training I think we need more across the board about being more neutral and then being just how to handle angry voters and being and having neutral responses to that um, so um, I appreciated that we were alerted to it but we needed to be concerned about any poll watchers possibly and uh, luckily I know that uh, some of the poll watching rules and I, and they did tell us that um, the poll watching rules were going to be posted there if a poll worker showed up they could read the rules or we could tell them where to read them and um, to help um, you know, handle any issues, but um, we were alerted that we needed to call 911 if anything um, outside the scope happened. Again, to go back to my example, I think you know that the airlines train their people on how to deal with angry passengers, and yeah, uh, poll workers are going to need some training in how to deal with angry voters, or sometimes even how to deal with angry colleagues, which I've heard of. 
I should mention also that the Voting Rights Task Force will be meeting tomorrow night, November 14th. Um, if you want to join our meeting, if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, please go to meetup.com and search for Voting Rights Task Force, and it'll give you the time and location. It's 7 o'clock tomorrow, November 14th. Probably here at Next Space, but we're not sure yet because we have some things to confirm. Uh, we are going to be talking about doing a strategy session. The primary thing we'll be talking about, what bills do we want to introduce in Sacramento next year? We need to start thinking about that and working that out. There's a long list and we can't take the entire list to Sacramento. So we're going to be strategizing and figuring out what is the most important and most achievable. We hope you can join us. Go to meetup.com and look for Voting Rights Task Force and you'll find it. And it, once again, where do people go to support Ballots for Bernie and all of our efforts to make elections transparent and verified? So Ballots for Bernie, as you guys know, we started because we had a group of Valley, uh, Bernie supporters that were concerned about um, rigged elections. And uh, we have become since a neutral group um, so that we could support anyone who's um, concerned about election integrity. And, and so you can be from any party, um, think about our name being just honoring um, Bernie Sanders uh, because he's just an amazing legislator. Uh, and representative of, of everyone, I feel. And so we joined forces of Voting Rights Task Force and many other ballot counting, uh, ballot observers, poll watcher groups to form the California Election Integrity Coalition. And you can find the California Election Integrity Coalition on YouTube. We upload all these uh, videos that we do, live streams uh, for the wider audience, the audience that's not on Facebook. And we also attend the Voter Rights Task Force meetings uh, held on the first Mondays of every month, or second Monday of every month. And um, Ballots for Bernie uh, mostly um, is leading these live streams. And we will be, um, when people sh come to us and say, hey, how do I organize in my county, since we have some expertise based on the, uh, what we learned in the primaries and what we've learned in the, in the general elections, we can guide um, you and your county to how to get involved. We can talk to you about how to connect and build a relationship with our ROV, how to organize um, and find people in your local area that might be interested in doing this. And to do this, not because of a party that you're associated with, do this because you're a citizen concerned with election integrity. Um, and one of the things that would be helpful is if we had just a little bit of money to get more improved technology um, and also um, some funds to um, pay some volunteers, some stipends to organize us uh, across the state and to have travel funds so when we can uh, uh, support the Voting Rights Task Force to go to um, Sacramento when they need us to, to go and testify on our experiences. And um, what if there were someone with a, an amazing experience uh, in this testimony and we needed them to go all the way from Los Angeles to Sacramento and accompany Jim Soper, that would take that person maybe two, three hundred dollars they don't have. And we want to be able to support those efforts and if so if you have a few dollars to share we would appreciate um, any donation, any amount of five, ten dollars. You could do that at gofundme.com forward slash take back the vote. So thank you so much again, and if you have any comments, please post them. We will be answering them. Jim, uh, Mario, myself, uh, Kathy, um, could, we'll be watching the comment feeds throughout the week and hopefully hear some about your, your experiences. Um, I did read one earlier, was from Ms. Delaney, I believe, um, and um, we'll be commenting, uh, uh, responding back to um, her comment because I remember it being really good and um, hopefully just engaging you in our comments and moving forward. We plan to do some more live streams uh, to talk about more bills that are maybe introduced um, in the state or talking about uh, what does it mean to do hand uh, paper counted ballots, um, hand counted paper ballots um, at a nationwide and maybe just any other things that are interesting to you, uh, please post those and we will try to bring experts 
um, to talk about those issues. So thanks. Joining us.